Hello, American Rod Shop family. Welcome back into episode 158. This is your premier video magazine to find great cars for sale. My name is Solon, and speaking of great cars, I found for you this week 10 beautiful classic convertibles that you can buy and drive, and these are awesome. I think you're going to like it. They're very affordable in my opinion, but you guys can be the decision on that. Now, also in tonight's video, we're going to find out who won that beautiful star-spangled Mustang Hot Wheels that we gave away in the last video. Plus, we'll be showcasing a new Hot Wheels that's awesome as well to be given away in the next upcoming video. And we've got automotive trivia. How well do you know your automotive history? And not to say the least, we've got the second round of the Fantasy Vintage Stock Car Racing segment in which I'm going to pit eight subscribers against each other to find out who will win that race. So we've got an action-packed video. Stay tuned for all that. But now let's go ahead and check out car number one. 1963 Mercury Comet Convertible, listed in Gunnersville, Alabama, for $14,500. Described by the seller as being a sexy convertible, this red 1963 Mercury Comet convertible is up for sale and it runs and drives great. A low 7,354 convertibles were produced in this year's model, making this one extremely hard to find. Driven an original 72,000 original miles, this car is powered by the original 260 V8 engine and automatic transmission. Everything about this convertible works as it should, including the factory power steering, the AM radio, and the power top. The body is solid, rust-free, and the paint displays well, but does have some light patina in some areas. A new radiator has been installed, and this car runs, starts, drives as it should. This will make you a great summer cruiser that you can take anywhere in style, asking a reasonable $14,500 or best offer, and sorry, no trades. So guys, this one's not too far from me. Currently right now, I don't have the means to store a car, but I may just go try and check it out for fun. If I do, I'll drop a video in the next upcoming episode or two and share with you what I found. Now, if you're interested in checking on any of these cars that are up for sale in this video, then all you have to do is go over to this video's description, click on the word more, and when it expands downward, find the car you're looking for, and click on the link underneath that, and it'll take you straight to the ad where the car is at for sale. Unless the car is already sold, then no ad will pop up. Number two, 1965 Chevrolet Corvair, listed in Columbia, Tennessee, for $8,800. Up for sale is this very nice blue 1965 Chevrolet Corvair convertible that runs and drives great. This is an all-original, unmolested convertible that has had only 80,000 original miles put on it. Powered by the original engine and automatic transmission, this is a sweet little fun cruiser to have to drive this summer. The original black interior still looks incredible for its age, and the blue paint displays well on a solid and rust-free body. All glass, chrome, and electrical items work well. The seller's asking a low $8,800 for this car, and it should not last long at that price. So guys, tell me what you think about this Corvair. I think it's pretty sweet, and I think it's at a great price as well. Now, if you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe, and share. And don't forget to turn on that notification bell. You want to be one of the first ones to get notified when these videos drop so that you'll have the earliest chance possible to try and check out these cars that are up for sale. Now, number three is an oldie but a goodie. 1917 Ford Model T listed in Spencer, Indiana for $9,900. Up for sale at a very affordable price is this rare black 1917 Ford Model T Touring that runs and drives great. The original engine was rebuilt about seven years ago and has been driven about 500 miles since the rebuild and coupled up to the original manual transmission, it all runs smoothly. The top speed on this is consistently around 35 miles per hour. The original black paint still displays nicely 
and several new items have been added or repaired such as a new starter, a new soft top, and new tires. The original black interior was recovered a few years back and still looks good. This is a very nice example of a rare, hard to find 107 year old 1917 Ford Model T. And the seller is asking a very affordable 9,900 or best offer. And guys, you don't see many of these around. All right, let's pause and do some automotive trivia. How well do you know your automotive history? And tonight's question is there are going to be three of them in the video that all pertain to the Dodge Corporation. Question one. In 1900, the Dodge Brothers Company was formed for what reason? Was it A, to build tractor parts, B, to build cars, C, to build auto parts, or D, to sell automotive insurance? If you know that answer, drop it in the comments and we'll check everybody's answers at the end of the video. Number four. 1967 Ford Galaxy Convertible, listed in Wyoming, Michigan for $11,000. Up for sale by its second owner is this burgundy 1967 Ford Galaxy Convertible. The current owner of this 67 Galaxy describes this car as an absolute beautiful cream puff of a car. Except for the wheels, this is an all-original 67 Galaxy Convertible with only 88,000 original miles on it. Powered by the original 390 motor and automatic transmission, this convertible drives and cruises like a dream. The original burgundy paint displays nicely, and the glass, chrome, and electrical components all work well. The matching red interior is comfortable and amazing for its age. New plugs and wires have been recently added, plus other new parts. The seller's asking 11000 or best offer, and it comes with a clean title. And guys, the thing about convertible investments, they just keep going up and up every year. Trivia question number two. In 1920, both the founders of Dodge, John and Horace Dodge, died from what? Was it A, a plane crash, B, both died of heart attacks, C, Spanish flu, or D, train wreck? If you know that answer, drop it in the comments and we'll check everybody's answers at the end of the video. Number five, 1964 Plymouth Valiant Signet 200, listed for $12,000 in Charleston, Illinois. Up for sale is this very hard to find beautiful little red 1964 Plymouth Valiant Signet 200 convertible. Only 2,600 were produced for this year model, and this one is powered by the original engine and manual four-speed transmission, and it runs and drives great. It has recently received several new parts, way too many to list here, and several repairs to ensure it runs and drives like a top. The original paint and solid straight body still look good and displays nicely, but it could use a repaint at some point in its future. The original black interior is very comfortable and looks great for its age. The five-spoke aluminum wheels give it a sporty look. The glass is all good. The chrome shines well and everything electrical works great, making this rare little Plymouth a great and fun car to drive, especially with summer coming on. The seller is asking a low $12,000 or best offer. And I think this 64 Plymouth is just absolutely amazing looking. And any of you Mopar heads out there, drop in the comments if you've actually owned one of these little cars like this one before, or when was the last time you saw one? I haven't seen a convertible like this one, I don't think ever in my life, uh, which is not unusual down here in the South because they scrapped a lot of cars. But let me know in the comments. Be fun to talk about. Now, if you're looking for a really good gift item for somebody that enjoys watching this show or you just like to support this channel, all you have to do is go over to the American Rod Shop store. I have put the link in the description to make it easy access, but there in the store you can find coffee mugs, t-shirts, mouse pads, posters, hoodies, and many more gift items, and the sale of all these items goes back into supporting this channel. 
Number six, and I haven't seen one of these things in a long time. 1973 Volkswagen Thing Convertible, listed in Sydney, Montana for $14,000. Up for sale by the original owner is this orange 1973 Volkswagen Thing with only 3,000 original miles on it. Always pampered, garage kept, and well maintained, this thing runs and drives great with no issues whatsoever. Powered by the very smooth running original engine and manual transmission, this car makes a cool summer driving cruiser that the young and the old will both enjoy. It will always turn heads and will get the younger generation to ask, what is that thing? Which you reply, yes it is. This car is 100% original with the exception of the new matching custom orange and white seat covers that were added just a few short years ago. The body is super straight, rust-free, and the original paint and graphics still display nicely. This is a very nice, extremely hard to find, one owner car that will only increase in value as the years continue on. The seller's asking $14,000 or best offer, and guys, let me know in the comments what year was the last time you actually saw a thing in public. Let me know in the comments. I think it'll be great fun to talk about. Dodge trivia question number three. What year did the Dodge Ram become its own brand just called Ram? Was it 1990? Was it 2000? Was it 2005? Or was it 2010? Drop your answer in the comments, and like I said before, we'll check everybody's answer at the end of the video. Up with number seven, and I could not pass this one by even though it's another Volkswagen. 1971 Volkswagen Carmen Convertible, listed in Wahala, South Carolina for $12,000. Up for sale is this original and very hard to find black 1971 Volkswagen Super Beetle Special Edition Carmen Convertible which runs and drives great. This is a beautiful classic convertible that is not only very cool to drive, but is always a head turner and gathers an inquisitive crowd wherever it goes. New disc brakes and a new master cylinder have been added to improve the handling ability. This VW has always been garage kept and well maintained as evident in the pictures. The original gloss paint on a super straight solid body still looks amazing. A new white top and a new matching white interior were added not too long ago, and they both look incredible. Classic white wall tires add a smooth custom touch that makes this cool summer cruiser one to be seen in and one to own. The seller's asking a firm $12,000, and it comes with a clean title. And I guess the question to you guys again, when was the last time you ever saw a Carmen convertible Super Beetle Volkswagen? Number 8, 1972 Ford Mustang Convertible, listed in Lubbock, Texas, for $22,500. Up for sale by the third owner is this beautiful red 1972 Mustang Convertible with just 25,821 original miles on it. Powered by the original factory ordered 351 Cleveland with a four-barrel carburetor, coupled up to the original automatic transmission, this topless cruiser runs great. Factory heat and air conditioning, plus a beautiful tan interior, all rounds out this package nicely. New tires and a Positrack rear end make handling great, and an installed Bluetooth radio makes it a joy to drive. Garage kept, well maintained, it does require some minor TLC to make it more outstanding, such as some minor dings in the door, on the driver's side, and minor paint chipping on the passenger front quarter panel. The racing mirrors need replacing, and there is some unknown minor electrical drain on the battery, but overall, an affordable asking price of $22,000 or best offer for this nice Mustang, and I just love this Mustang's body design and how it's built. It just looks super awesome from a side view. Guys, tell me what you think about it in the comments. Now, if you don't find your dream car in this video, check out our last two videos that we posted like this one, and then also check out this one. Still a lot of great cars for sale in those videos, and who knows, you just might find your dream car in one of those. 
Number nine, 1960 Lincoln Continental Convertible, listed in Salt Lake City, Utah, for $17,500. With just over 100,000 miles on it, up for sale is a very rare light blue 1960 Lincoln Continental Convertible with only 2,044 units produced in 1960 and not many still around. This is a true survivor car that still runs and drives great. This is a solid, rust-free, dent-free original classic car that has been in a family collection for over 30 years. Always garaged, well-maintained, pampered, and loved by the owner, it is just now being offered for sale for the first time in 30 years. This is a 100% unmolested original car that will turn heads wherever you want to take it. The paint, the glass, the original interior all look amazing and displays well. The original motor, transmission, and electrical system all work good, but the power convertible top is currently not working and will need the pumps on it replaced. The seller is asking for an affordable $17,500 or best offer for this great summer cruiser. And guys, the Lincoln Continentals have always been incredible looking cars and this convertible is no exception. And if you will, drop in the comments what was your favorite car in tonight's video and why. I always enjoy reading everybody's comments and it'll be fun to talk about. All right, you've stuck in here till number 10 and don't forget right after we showcase this car, we will be giving away the Hot Wheels that was featured in last week's video. Plus, we will be showcasing the Hot Wheels for next week's giveaway. And we still got the answers to automotive trivia coming up. Plus, we've got the fantasy vintage stock car racing segment. Stay tuned for all that. But now let's check out number 10. 1966 Mercury Meteor Montcalm Convertible. Listed in Meaford, Ontario, for $19,500. Up for sale is an extremely rare baby blue 1966 Mercury Meteor Montcalm convertible that is only one of only 514 made and sold exclusively in Canada alone, and it runs and drives like a dream. Not many have survived the harsh northern climate, making this a true rare find for the lucky buyer. This one overall is in very good condition, with the top in excellent condition as well. This is an all-numbers matching car powered by the original 289 motor and automatic transmission, making this ride still good on fuel and still having lots of power. This car has a low 29,200 original miles, and you can tell it has been well-maintained and garage kept by just the way it looks. No restoration is needed here, just someone to love it and own this fantastic summer cruiser. It is ready to show or go, asking a reasonable $19,000 US dollars or best offer. Included are the rare fender skirts and all of the original paperwork. And guys, here is another one I have never literally laid eyes on in public before. Tell me, have you ever seen one? I think it's quite rare. Okay, let's pause right here and give away that beautiful little Hot Wheels Mustang car that's painted a red, white, and blue. And we'll go over to raffledash.com. We're going to put in the URL code and hit select a comment. And the winner is Brenda Kramer, 6351. Brenda Kramer, 6351. Congratulations, Brenda. You've got approximately seven days to contact me at AmericanRodShop at Yahoo.com, and I'll give you details on how to claim your prize. Now, for next week's giveaway, we're going to be giving away this awesome-looking 1955 Chevy two-door hardtop Hot Wheels car. It's got the uh, scale-correct 17-inch rims on it, 164 model Hot Wheels. Just beautiful. If you want to try to win this, you just need to do four things for me. First of all, be a subscriber. Go ahead and subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. Drop the words 55 Chevy in the comments. Also, hit the like button and enter as often as you would like to. Do those four things, you'll be entered in on opportunity to be able to win this little Hot Wheels. We will give away in the next video. Before we get into the big race, let's check out your answers to the trivia questions. Hope you got them all right. 
for question number one was, in 1900, the Dodge Brothers Company was formed for what reason? The answer is, it was formed to build and sell auto parts, in which Ford, evidently, was one of its number one buyers. Question number two. The founders of Dodge, John and Horace Dodge, died from what in 1920? The answer is the Spanish flu. In January 1920, while in New York City to attend an auto expo, the brothers both became sick with the Spanish flu and pneumonia. John Dodge died that month, while Horace passed away later that same year on December the 10th due to long-term complications from the flu and the pneumonia. Question number three. In what year did the Dodge Ram become its own brand, just called Ram? The answer, 2010. It was spun off from Dodge and branded the separate brand Ram in 2010, just after Fiat acquired Chrysler in 2009. Okay, now for the segment that everybody's been waiting on, the Fantasy Vintage Stock Car Racing segment, in which I'm going to pit eight subscribers against each other in a multi-lap race round track style vintage cars. But first, let's go ahead and look at the driver lineup for tonight's race. In row number one, inside lane, you got John Stamos driving the silver and black car number eight. The outside lane, you got Timmy Topperkop driving the red vintage coupe number seven. And in row number two, we got Bill Andrews driving car number 28 on the inside lane. Outside lane, we got Clayton Briggs driving car number 12. Row three, inside lane, we got Robert Paul in the gold and black number eight. On the outside lane, we've got George Cullen driving that red 57, number 83. And on row four, on the inside lane, we got Jack Barrett driving car number 43. Outside lane, we got Chaos driving car number 64. Now, the field of cars have been circling the track for a few laps waiting for us to join them. So let's get over there and start racing. Okay, everybody's in formation. Let's go racing. And getting the green flag as they come around the track. Number seven tries to make a move on number eight in that first position, but he falls back to number two position. And in number three position is 28. As they come on around the car. Going on the speed, looks like number eight kind of stretches out his lead by about four car lengths. And battling for third is number eight and number 28. Rounding the curve again, we still got number eight up front, number followed by number seven. Oh, got a spin out there. Looks like 28, who was, I think, in the third position originally, has spun out on that fourth turn. Let's see if we can get him back into the race on the way. Looks like everybody's lined to back up. Now taking the lead on this start off will be number eight still in the first position, number seven in the second position. Coming around there, he's giving them the, the go look. He's gonna turn them loose on this lap with the green flag and they're back to racing again. Number eight powers ahead by half a car length. Set number seven, second in place. Followed by the number eight has moved up in the gold and black race car. Quickly followed behind by the other pack. Number eight's now still holding about a two-car lead. Following up the rear is 45 and 28. 28 has passed 64 and is now in the number seven position coming from the rear after that spin out. Everybody's still looking good, kind of trading paint there a little bit between number seven and number 28. 45 has moved up one spot to spot number six. And now number eight has positioned his lead out at least about eight or nine car lengths. Number 83 has moved up to the fourth position.
Oh, we just had a spin out. Right hand side of this lane out of the picture. I think it was car 83 that spun out. He's going to go on the caution flag as it comes out. That's going to cause them to all get bunched back up together. There's no telling who's going to win this race. I think under the caution flag, it's going to take away one more lap, which means they should have only two laps to go, counting the start back to racing lap and then the final lap with the white flag. Everybody's bunching back together. It's looking good. It'll be a tight race between eight and seven. Gonna tell them going around one more time, get their stuff back in order. Here you got number eight in first place, number seven in second, and the gold and black number eight has moved up all the way from the fifth position, now challenging number seven for the second spot. You got car number 12 still holding that fourth position, and car number 83 has moved up one notch to the fifth position. They're looking good. He's giving them the black flag, and they're off and racing again. Number eight still maintaining his lead, but he got fights in the backfield for the third and fourth place. One lap to go, ladies and gentlemen. Who is going to take it? Number eight is still about three car lengths ahead now. Number seven is closing fast on him, and number 12 doing right up there with it. Here he comes. Number eight is going to take the checkered flag for the win. And there is your winner, John Stamos, driving that silver and black, and I think that was probably a Chevelle, number eight car to the win. Congratulations, John, on your win in the Fantasy Vintage Stock Car Racing segment for tonight. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, and hopefully next week we'll be doing a 10-car race that all goes through okay. But listen, I appreciate each and every one of you joining us tonight for this video. God bless each and every one of you, and I'll see you guys in the next video.